What is up, everybody? I'm back. And in spite of being thwarted many times, I'm finally going to be making that sugiyaki that our player Bang TK requested. Um, <clears throat> now, this is not going to be the most traditional sukiyaki in the world. I did some research, and well, there's several ingredients that my family just won't eat. So, um, we're mixing it up. We're just going with whatever sounds good. But the core idea here seems to be we're going to sear off some meat in a pan, and then we're going to put some sauce on it, and then we're going to finish cooking it, and then we're going to put our vegetables and our sauce in the pan, and we're going to braise everything from there. So it's all about this sauce, right? And this is where the holdup came because this sauce actually requires sake. So I needed the store to be open that sold sake because I've only got one in town. Um, but we've got sake. We are cooking with alcohol this time. Uh, you can get cooking sake in the grocery store. So I don't feel that bad about it, um, but it is a critical unsubstitutable ingredient. Uh, cooking sake has enough salt in it that you can't drink it and that affects obviously like the taste of your sauce there because you've added a bunch of salt and then I'm using soy sauce and so that's gonna have a bunch of salt so anyways we're gonna use half a cup of sake half a cup of mirin which is so good I mean you could practically drink it out of the bottle that might make you sick but it's it's doable I could understand it uh, a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar brown sugar always preferred when making Asian sauces um, and half cup of soy sauce <clears throat> three tablespoons of brown sugar to be precise and then I'm gonna chop up a whole bunch of vegetables and put my knife skills to the test cutting this chuck into thin slices couldn't get sukiyaki meat in my grocery store so we got a nice well marbled cut of meat. Uh, ribeye would have been preferred, but ribeye costs twice as much. The marbling is really important though, because the fat adds a lot of flavor. And yeah, I'm just going to be processing it down into very thin slices so that it's edible um, in the dish. The thin slices allow it to sear quickly, cook quickly, keeps everything on track. So yeah, uh, I'm going to get the sauce going in the pot and we will be right back with that. Okay, so we're adding a half cup of soy sauce and three tablespoons of brown sugar to this uh, after giving a couple of minutes for the alcohol to get cooked out of the sake and mirror. I may end up using a smaller pan here. Traditionally, this is cooked at the table in a hot pot, cast iron hot pot, but what I've got is a cast iron skillet. And my camp cook stove is probably not suitable for cooking in a cast iron skillet on my dinner table. So. Brown sugar is preferred for any, well, I just generally prefer brown sugar for the most part, but for any Asian style sauce recipe, it's gonna have this more savory sweetness to it. Um, I may end up doubling my sauce recipe here, but we'll see. For now I'm just gonna get this dissolved. Get the sugar dissolved in here. get all the flavor incorporated now another thing that I noticed in the traditional sukiyaki is that they cut the sauce with a seaweed broth so if the sauce is a little too intense the flavor is a little too strong they add some of this seaweed broth to cut it um, nobody in my family likes seaweed so and several people won't eat it at all. So that's something else that I'm leaving out. Which means that this is going to be more potent. If I have to cut it, I'll probably just use water. Um, <clears throat> add a little bit of water to it, dilute it down. But like any good sauce, I'll be sure to taste it here in just a moment, actually. Because this sugar should be pretty much dissolved.
That's good. That's good. It's in, it's full, but it's good. We're going to turn that off and we're going to let that sit. Um, and we're going to clean a lot of this up. Okay, so for this next step, it's going to involve me chopping a lot of veggies and cutting some meat and whatnot. And as of late, I've been showing the entire cooking process. A lot of the meals have been fast paced. There's not really been a pause and start opportunity. But I didn't know if that's something you guys liked. If it is, let me know in the comments below if you like seeing the whole process and seeing me go through every stage of the uh, preparation. Um, if you prefer what I'm about to do, where I'm just going to cut right to the next step, where I may double my sauce and already have my meat searing in the pan and you know all that jazz then you know let me know which one you prefer and obviously some meals are just better suited to to that than others i'm not going to give you an eight hour youtube video of my slow cooked beef short ribs but you know we work within reason here um so yeah this time i'm gonna go ahead and cut i'm gonna process all this stuff out get my knife skills back and we'll see how it goes from there be back shortly. All right, everybody, we are back. We got our vegetables cut, we got our beef cut. This feels more like a challenge run than an instructional video, to be honest. Um, we did double our sauce. We've got a hot skillet here. And um, yeah, we're gonna get our, go ahead and get our beef into it. Um, and get it seared off. Put a little bit of this sauce. Hey, come on. Here's So, as far as I can tell, our cooking process is basically going to be sear the meat and some of the sauce, add a bunch of vegetables, add a bunch of sauce, and let those hang out for about five or six minutes. Um, and then we'll see if it's any good. I... I need to go get my recording set up for the Valorantine. Um, <clears throat> but that should only take a minute or two when this gets some nice color. So I will be right back while you guys watch this beautiful beef simmer in this pan.
You're not logged into your right. Oh. One second. All right. Now what are we doing? Simmer this down for like eight minutes. I hope I had to cut the heat really quick, but I might have to bring it back up just to get it going again because we do not want super crunchy vegetables. And you know my feelings on mushrooms are that you should cook the absolute bejesus out of them. But yeah, seems like we're pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video and we'll cut back in when we're just about finished. That way we don't have to sit here for an indeterminate amount of time watching this bubble. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed. Next video, goodness, there's a lot of stuff that I want to cook coming up soon. So we'll see. We'll see. I might just be cranking them out for the next couple days, but I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content. Be sure to like and subscribe to support what we're doing here at CG to catch all of our other content. We've got we have a company content out and coming out featuring our Valorant roster and some more highlights on the way. But yeah, look forward to all that and I will see you next time. All right, I totally baited everybody by doing the outro, but um, probably gonna totally kill viewer retention with that. <laughs> but uh, this is where I'm calling it. The vegetables still nice crunch. They've absorbed a lot of the broth. They've got good flavor. Um, it's not a huge portion because I honestly don't know how much of anybody is going to eat this. But it looks good. I'm excited to dig in. I'm excited to, to go after it. Um, I'm going to pull all this stuff out. I'm doing rice in this pot of boiling, almost boiling water here. And then I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to do some noodles in the broth in this. So hopefully that'll all be really good. The noodles are super simple. I got some udon noodles from the grocery store. You take them out of the pack, you put them in. It's just like the stir fry episode. Rather than explain it here, go watch the stir fry episode. Yep, that's right. Selling out for me. Anyways, that really will be all this time. And uh, thank you for joining us. And I will see you next time.